Hi, my name is Alex Vasquez, and I'm here to discuss block periodization, and I am from Evolutionary Athletics. Block periodization is rooted in two key principles. The first one is concentrated loading, and the second one is the long-term delayed training effect. This video specifically will discuss concentrated loading versus mixed training. Mixed training versus concentrated loading. One of the drawbacks to mixed training is that it dilutes the training effect. Essentially, the adaptation to your workout is spread over many independent goals. So you're training for strength, power, speed, endurance, all at one particular moment in time. As a result, there isn't a really strong stimulus to get stronger or a really strong stimulus to have better endurance or to become more powerful because your, your body doesn't know which stimulus is the most important one to adapt to. Mixed training also requires higher training volumes. Because you're training for a number of goals, speed, conditioning, power, strength, hypertrophy, the total sum of training volume has to be higher. You might spend 15 minutes on speed work, 20 minutes on speed, 20, 30 minutes on strength training, 20 minutes on power, conditioning, 30, maybe 40 minutes on. In the end, you end up with a workout that takes a really long time and has a high volume of work. As opposed to concentrating your efforts, concentrated loading, on one particular goal such as strength. If you really focus all your efforts on strength, you can accomplish a intense training effect in under an hour. So the overall volume of work is much lower with concentrated loading. Another problem with mixed training is that it has a low level stimulus. Even though it's high volumes, and this seems very counterintuitive, you can't train at a high intensity and with a high volume for a ton of goals. You can't spend an hour on strength and an hour on speed and an hour on endurance and an hour on hypertrophy and an hour on power because if you did that, you'd never get out of the gym. You'd be there five hours a day. So because of that, we have to reduce the overall volumes and intensities of work for each independent goal. So that leads to a lower level stimulus because we're not putting high intensity and high volume into any one particular training goal. Another big problem with the low level stimulus is that it's not suitable for advanced athletes. As we know, as you get stronger and advanced in your performance, it takes higher and higher intensities to further stimulate adaptation. For example, when you first started bench pressing, doing 135 pounds for three sets of 10 was probably enough to stimulate strength gains. However, if you're benching 405 pounds, 135 for three sets of 10 is not enough stimulation. You have to train closer to your one rep max, and we all know training at for example, 80% of 400 pounds is 320. That's going to be much more intensive and harder on the body than training at 135 for your three sets of 10 was. Because advanced athletes need these higher intensities and higher volumes than beginners, mixed training does not accomplish any of those goals because the intensity and volume has to be held at a lower level. Another big problem with mixed training is that it only leads to two to three peaks throughout the training year. So uh, part of the reason for that is that games, gains come too slowly because we have a low level stimulus. So we have low level gains. Gains don't come very rapidly. Another part of this is that through mixed training, we tend to have to follow a more linear periodization model where each week builds on the previous week and we gradually increase intensity over time training cycles end up in order to reach a peak having to last anywhere from 12 to 20 weeks. So for having 12 weeks per training cycle, that means the maximum number of peaks we can have in a year is four. And if we're looking at 20 weeks, 
the maximum number of peaks we ha we can have in a year is two. So I know I said mixed training leads to only two to three peaks throughout the year. Um, if we're training in season, it's really hard to peak an athlete with mixed training because the volumes and intensities at the highest levels are too high. So as a result, it's really, really tough to peak in season. So if we're looking at off season, you only end up usually with two peaks at the most. Concentrated loading, on the other hand, has a lot of benefits. The first one is that concentrated loading has a concentrated training effect. In other words, if we're training for, in order, if we want to get stronger, we train for strength. And most 80 to 90 percent of our volume and intensity is dedicated towards getting stronger. So we train with high intensities and we do all the heavy, heavy lifting that we need to get done to get stronger. If we want to be more powerful, we spend 80 to 90 percent of our time working on power development. If we want to move our limbs at higher velocities, we spend all our time working with high velocity movements. That way we get a stronger and more intense training effect and a more specific training effect to each goal. Because the loads are concentrated, because we're really only training for one to two goals and preferably one goal at any one time, that means we actually spend a lower volume of work than <clears throat> as compared to mixed training. So if we did, for example, 15 sets of high intensity strength work in a workout to develop a lot of maximal strength, that is much lower in volume than if we did a, con if we did a mixed training program where we spent maybe eight sets on maximal strength training. We did eight sets on power training, we did six sets of 40 meter sprints and then we finished that with a brutal conditioning circuit where we supersetted swings and goblet squats for 10 more sets the overall number of sets and number of volume is and amount of volume is much 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 lower when we use concentrated loading because we have all of our loads directed towards one goal, we use unidirectional loading in a concentrated loading program, we actually have a higher stimulus of training effect for that individual specific goal. So the, even though the overall volume, the sum volume of the training program is much lower, we are actually able to dedicate more intensity and more volume to the one specific goal of that training phase. And because we're putting more intensity and more volume in towards that one goal, we achieve a higher training stimulus despite using less overall training volume. So this means that we can give an elite athlete the high level of stimulus that they need without running the risk of overtraining that specific athlete. Another benefit of this is that we can have more training peaks throughout the year. So if we utilize the long-term delayed training effect, LTDTE, we can program cycles as short as six weeks. And in all honesty, we can tr uh, program training cycles as short as four weeks. This allows us to not just peak during the off season a couple times, or this would allow us to peak in the off season multiple times. And even more important than that, it allows us to peak during the season. For example, we can peak at the start of camp right before the season starts. And then six weeks later, we can peak the first game of the season. And then we can peak multiple games throughout the season that are going to be very important to us. Oh, we're going to play one of our in-division football rivals, say AFC East. Oh, the Bills are going to play the Patriots. The Patriots have dominated the division. We can peak our athletes for that specific week in that specific game. We can pick out important teams or important stretches of the season and make sure our athletes are at their performing at their highest level during that time. We can peak at the start of the playoffs. Playoffs are beginning, we want to make a deep run, have our athletes the most fresh, most explosive, and most powerful they can be at the start of the playoffs. 
because cycles are so short, four to six weeks, we can actually peak an athlete for the playoffs and then also for the championship game. So when the Super Bowl comes or the Stanley Cup comes or the NBA championship or the World Series comes, we can make sure our athletes actually peaked for that, that specific part of the season as well. So because we can have very, very short training cycles, we can really decide what is the most important part, what are the most important parts of the season, and make sure everyone is performing at their best during those times. So in summary, concentrated loading has a number of advantages over mixed training. Uh, the concentrated training effect, so we can really, really get large rapid jumps in strength, power, and velocity. Or the other advantage of being able to peak in season and out of season and having multiple peaks throughout the year so that way we can really time and make sure our team is performing at their, at their best when it matters the most. Thank you for listening to me on this. And I will post another slideshow in the next few days talking about the long-term delayed training effect and how we manipulate that to manage all those multiple peaks that we're talking about during the season.